Thank you. Now I'd like, I'd like to recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Gerstemeyer, uh, we know that planning for the ISS began 20 years uh, before it was actualized, and now we're less than 10 years out from the administration's proposed extension uh, to 2024. Uh, does NASA have plans for some sort of station in lower Earth orbit beyond 2024? Uh, perhaps some sort of public-private partnerships, perhaps with our current international partners for an ISS replacement? Uh, or does NASA intend to leave any uh, LAO station entirely to commercial companies? I think at this point we're, we're looking to see if we can leave low Earth orbit to commercial companies. Uh, what we're doing is we're allowing them to do investigations on station to see that they can get a market return and it makes sense to, to do that. Then that we believe the agency's role is then to push further out into space to go into the region around the moon we call the proving ground region of space. We will move our research and our endeavors into that further region. It helps the agency get prepared to take bigger missions ultimately towards Mars. So at this point, we're envisioning a low Earth orbit to essentially be more of a private sector activity, and we'll use the remaining lifetime of station to let the uh, private sector understand the benefits of microgravity research to their terrestrial investigations and see if it helps them from a fundamental research standpoint. Uh, that's great to hear. Um, our government is investing in capsules, Orion, Dragon, CST-100, Cygnus. Uh, most capsules are optimized to get crew and cargo back and forth to the ISS. Uh, what role will capsules play once the International Space Station reaches the end of its life? Again, for the commercial crew program and also the commercial cargo program, the uh, the companies have an interest beyond just the NASA need. They're building these capsules. They'll own the intellectual property. They'll be able to operate these capsules for their own purposes. If this private station we discussed earlier is available, they can use this transportation system to deliver cargo to it. They can deliver crew to it, et cetera, outside of the government. So this will essentially allow the private sector to go get transportation services on its own from these companies that we've enabled through these initial startup contracts on ISS. That's great. Uh, the space shuttle and X-37, uh, both examples of reusable spacecraft that lands on a runway, also have had track records of success. Has NASA completely ruled out the use of reusable, runway-capable vehicles for crew or cargo in the future? Um, the simple answer is no. Uh, each, I think, uh, in case of the Orion vehicle, it's geared towards uh, deep space activities where Carrying wings makes it very difficult to re-enter into the Earth's atmosphere, so the deep space vehicles will typically be a capsule-type vehicle, but for low Earth orbit transportation, wing vehicles are, are very nice and have many advantages as we, as we got to see through the shuttle program. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I yield back. Uh, <clears throat> thank you.